Folks, in this day and age of modern cartridges, who the heck still wants a 270 Winchester? Good question. Well, me, for one. What? I'll never sell my 270 Winchester, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm shocked. But the question remains, how good is it oh, compared that's a good to all the modern cartridges? I'll bet we're going to find out on this episode of Ron's Former Outdoors, right? We're going to try. <laughs> hey, everybody, stay tuned. It's the old 270 Winchester rides again. Da -da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, bum, bum. Joseph von Benedict here to try to sell me on the old 270 Winchester. Joseph, I have a confession right up front. I don't even own a 270 Winchester rifle anymore. Back off. <laughs> Shame on you, Ron. I know that. I'm going to be drummed out of the core. <laughs> but really, I've yeah, I've got a 6.5 PRC. It does the same thing. Sure. A little bit better at longer ranges. I shot the 270 for so many years, I thought I'd just branch out a little bit. And some young hunter came along and he wanted a 270, so I sold my last one to him. You forgive me? Fair enough. I'll consider it. Okay. And, you know, there are cartridges. I've got one here. This is a 6.8 Western that just do more mm -hmm. than the classic 270 Winchester. We'll touch on that. But really, this, uh, this discussion today is about the grand old 270. And one of the reasons I'll never sell mine is because mine was the first big game rifle, proper centerfire big game rifle that I had. Now, my dad was a purist. He didn't believe anything designed after about 1895 was worth worrying about. <laughs> so I grew up in my like early through my mid teens hunting with uh, lever actions, generally chambered in something almost said archaic, like a 4440 Winchester. Ooh, that is archaic. Yeah, I shot a few nice bucks, but I'll tell you what, I have dreams, almost said nightmares, about the big deer that I couldn't shoot because my rifle just wasn't capable. They were uh, three or 400 yards away, yeah, right? And you yeah. can't do with that. Typical Western <clears throat> stuff. Yeah, so when I was 18, I started training horses for an old doctor. Retired, very old, and within a couple of years, he passed away. And much to my surprise, he wills me a rifle. Mm. It was a Jack O'Connor classic pre-64 model 70 and 270 Winchester. And mm. that rifle opened a whole new world of performance to me. I'll bet. I hand loaded a bunch for it. I used to load several different bullets, but my favorites were the 140 grain Sierra Game King. Still mm -hmm. a great choice to 400 yards on deer size game and 150 grand partitions for use on elk, and it always worked. I've got that rifle right here. Now this is wearing a new stock. When I was in my 20s under the tutelage of a gunsmith, I built a stock for it. The original is pretty scarred up, but the metal's in great shape. So this is a real nice piece of walnut, and I did a uh, pretty good job for the most part. You did part. that, I mean, huh? I did this, yep. I there are- commend you. There are some Areas that are imperfect, mm -hmm. you know, like now, that foreign. I certainly would have chosen an <laughs> ebony rather than, uh, yeah, I that think was a little glaring, yeah, curly maple or something like that. I tried to match it with the grip cap and so forth. But the cool thing about this 270 rifle is with hand loads it liked, it would shoot six tenth inch groups all day long. Oh, wow, what, what year demand. was this going back into the 80s? Uh, yeah, late 80s, late, I, 80s, eh, yeah. late 80s, very early 90s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I tried a bunch of different factory loads and hand loads through this. Everything shot into an inch and a half until I started really tuning. And I got that Sierra to shoot very, very well. So we shot a lot of nice deer with this. I shot an honest to goodness 33 inch mainframe mule deer back when. When you know, there were such things. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. But anyway, let's talk about what the cartridge can do today <clears throat> compared to our new rounds and yeah we're going back to 1925 on this folks <clears throat> yeah that is an old cartridge 100 but, years old next year yeah but old doesn't mean you can't do it that's right the, the cartridges are not like humans mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't get weaker with age <laughs> <laughs> they might get um outdated though so let's ask that question is the 270 winchester outdated you got to talk about your purposes folks because Inside of 400 yards for hunting on deer and elk, it's just fine. It carries enough bullet weight for those tasks. Where it starts to fall off is 
when you get into the modern need for extended range, right? The 270 Winchester was not specced with a fast enough rifling twist rate to stabilize long, heavy bullets. This is a 170 grain Burger VLD mm -hmm. type bullet in 0.277 diameter. That's what the 270 shoots, but it won't stabilize in the one in 10 no, twist in most 270 Winchester yeah, rifles. Too, too long. Yep. You got to go to something like the 6.8 Western to shoot that. Mm -hmm. So you're never going to have the wind bucking ability, the minimal drop at 600, 800 yards, the retained energy on impact at five and 600 and 700 that you do with some of the modern cartridges. It's just the way it is. It's not even quite like the 30 out 6 where the, the out 6 can be kind of brought into the modern yeah. age just by using something like a 190 grain uh, nozzle or Acubon long range. Yeah. Now, there is an Acubon long range for the 270, 150 grainer that's designed to just stabilize, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, in the standard rate of twist. Now, the G1 ballistic coefficient for that bullet is 0.591. Wow. Pretty high. Doesn't quite make that magical 600 number mm -hmm. that your true long range shooters want to <laughs> be at or higher. And uh, between you, me, and the fence post, I think that BC is somewhat optimistic. Yeah, I agree. In I my agree. testing and so forth. The Acubon long range also, it's a great bullet if your rifle shoots it well, but it tends to be a little bit finicky. Mm -hmm. So you got to hand load them. You got to spend some time tuning them. And some rifles just won't. Others love them. A bullet that's not finicky is one of these 145 grain ELDX. That's a great deer bullet. It's a little soft for elk, but that can be tuned very easily for accuracy. What are they rating the, S the, uh, BC, the on BC on that, on that is 0.5. Three one, I think I've got one. that number right that's still, here. Still, that's still pretty darn high. I mean, what what are you giving up with that for long range? Well, five three six, excuse five, three, me. Six. Okay. You know, it's it's not a uh, it's not a bad BC in traditional terms. You know, a classic, let's say a flat based lead tip thirty caliber one hundred sixty five grain bullet out of your thirty out six is going to have a BC in the low fours. Yeah. So compared to that, it's fairly uh, fairly good. It's just when you compare it to some of these bullets like I've got here, that 170 grain yeah. bullet, the, these, these are uh, a 7 mm bullet made by Sierra. That's a 183 grain bullet. Mm -hmm. And then next to it is a Barnes 208 grain LRX. Those all have what I almost called stupid high BCs. This is a 308? Yeah, that's for uh, really designed for the 300 PRC and the 300 uh, yeah. cartridges. Yeah, so it gets in, there is a different level, a different realm of performance. Just like a, you know, a, a modern pickup truck with a touch screen dash and all that is a different truck than a model Ford from the 1920s and 30s. Might not go any faster, might not any pull any better, not, might not haul as heavy a load, but it's got the fancy digital screen in the middle of it, folks. <laughs> well, and it's going to be more comfortable to ride in. You're going to have better fuel mileage. There's a lot of different mm. fine-tuned elements there that the modern cartridges have that the classic 270 doesn't. So do we just throw it away? Yeah, let's just forget about it. Yeah, so you have a band. The, what I think Joseph's trying to tell you, <laughs> folks, is that you should get a 6.8 Western and forget about the 270 like I did. I beg to differ. Now, what? I like the 6.8 Western. I actually really like it. It's a great cartridge. It gives 7mm Remington Magnum-esque performance with about 15% less recoil, mm -hmm. which has always been one of the beauties of the traditional <clears throat> classic 270 Winchester. Less recoil and really good performance for, yeah. for what you're uh, you but know, doing. You, I got to interject the old sure. man here. Who cares if it's not going to do what something else does at 800 yards? I'm not targeting game at 800 yards. I don't recommend right. anybody intentionally target game at 800 yards. And neither do I. Probably even 600 yards. I like to stay around at 300 for the vast majority of hunters. 300 yards is yep. a long shot. And it's not so much that they don't have the tools to shoot farther. Is they don't have the place to practice that far. I mean, I hear exactly. from guys say, Ron, tell me where my bullet will land at 200 yards if I zero it at 25, because that's the longest range I have to sight in at, at my place. <laughs> yeah, and that's a 
a valid point. I mean, you're you're going to struggle to shoot at 300 yards yeah. if you can't practice at 300 yards. Yeah, and, yeah. A, and a 270 at 300 yards, at 400 yards, I've used it successfully mm -hmm. at the 500 yards. And you read Jack O'Connor, yeah. and a lot of the old guys he hunted with back in those days, they were riding the high country uh, with sheep on the menu, caribou, and taking six hundred yard shots yeah. with the 270 with 130 grain bullets quite often. No, I think they were throwing quite a few shots <laughs> at times to get well, it there, done. It was, it was usually after it had been wounded or something, yeah. but yeah. Uh, but still, it can be done. Yeah. And on that note, I mean, I've shot a lot of game between, let's call it 350 and 450 yards with the 270 and it works wonderfully. My longest shot with the 270 was on a, a little four point buck that a friend had wounded and had gone up to the top of a mesa. It was about to top out. I also had a tag. I didn't want to shoot the bug, but, but he couldn't hit it again. And he said, please help me stop this. Deer. Oh yeah. I was already laying down. I put a shell in and dropped it with one shot, five, 495 yards, almost 500 yards. So yeah, it works and it works really well to 400 yards. Yeah. What are you getting with uh, for maximum point blank range? First of all, maybe we should back up a second here. Sure. The 270 Winchester is known as a great open country deer mm -hmm. cartridge. It is used on elk with some folks saying, oh, no, it's not big enough for elk. Of course, Elmer Keith would have jumped right in on that one. He didn't think it was good for anything but maybe coyotes. And I'm an Elmer fan, but I've shot several elk with it, and it worked great. <laughs> yeah. So it can work for elk. But I, that kind of puts it into a category for everyone to understand. Sure. Big mule deer, white tails, pronghorn, great. Open country round. Yeah, you can get by on elk. Um, moose. Plenty of moose have been shot with it, but it's not what most people would recommend for moose, right. getting a little bit light. Yep. What are we looking at for energy out of 130 grain bullet going, what, 3,100 feet per second? Yeah, that's about right. Let me look it up and see if Coming I can Coming like 2,800 foot pounds, you think? That sounds about right. Yeah, right. 2,600 to 2,900, depending on yep. bullet speed and all that. Of course, as you know, energy numbers, kinetic energy numbers are easily manipulated through velocity. So right. you may actually get more energy with a 130 mm -hmm. at 3,100 feet per second than a 150 50 at 2950 or 29. Yeah. But the 150 is a better bullet. It's for going to penetrate better. Yes. Yeah. So that brings us to a discussion then of bullet <laughs> construction. And here's mm -hmm. where you can really take the 270 and make it shine okay. for your intended purposes. We were looking up some fun statistics here before we started this discussion. In 2019, one study showed that the 270 was number six in the nation for factory load offerings. This well, researcher- Factory load offerings, you mean the different options yeah. in, you know, like, I wanna go buy some- So we've got like four right here okay. on the table, right? This, how research, many? this researcher found 143 different, different offerings. loads. Holy yeah. mackerel. Now, I'm sure some of them were pretty obscure, but that's cool. Yeah, I mean, that, that gives, gives you a, you a lot, lot of, of different options. So then what you need to look at, folks, is tailoring your bullet to your game. This is how you get the most out of that 270 cartridge. For me, if I was hunting deer, antelope, wild sheep, and so forth, I don't know if you can get much better than that 145 grand Hornady ELDX. Or if your rifle shoots it real well, the Nosler 150 grain Acubon long range, because they're starting to give you BCs that are somewhat impressive. It's mm -hmm. going to minimize your wind drift, going to help your bullet maximize on impact energy yeah, downrange because energy. it carries its velocity, yeah. right? And both those bullets open up real well on small body games, so they kill mm -hmm. them quickly. All right. However, <laughs> if you're going to shoot a, a big bodied old bull elk, I wouldn't personally choose either of those. The bonded Acubon long range would be okay, but there's better choices. Something like this. Uh, this is a federal trophy bonded tip bullet. Oh, that's a trophy tip. I was thinking it was the- Trophy uh, tip bullet. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> so actually, let me look. I tell a lie. That is the- That's the terminal the, ascent. That's the smaller, younger sibling of the trophy bonded tip. This is the 136 grain terminal ascent. Okay. Yes. So what's kind that of construction of that bullet? So the rear half is basically all one piece of copper. It's a monometal okay. rear with a front lead core bonded in, nickel plating to avoid um, corrosion, and then a good composite tip on the front. So you're sort of looking at a hybrid. Take a um, Barnes X bullet. Everybody's familiar yeah. with Barnes X. Mm -hmm. All copper. It has a hollow nose. This one would be the same, but you 
open that hollow nose to a larger diameter inside of that cone and fill it with lead and then bond it. So you're getting a bonded bullet, yes. a copper bullet, and, and lead, that big, expanding, and the beautiful heavier lead mushroom characteristic. That's the yeah. terminal ascent. Okay. So if I was to pick just one bullet to do everything with, it would probably be that one. Now, if I was specializing, which of course is one of the great things that 270 is great for, I'd do something like a 150 grain, very tough bullet. Oh, you're uh, 140 grain, all mono metal, all copper bullet by Barnes, a triple See, shock or something. They don't even make this one anymore. Yep. But this is what I used to use as my backup if I were elk hunting. Mm -hmm. Shoot an elk or a mule deer, I would carry a 130 and say, well, you know, if I need to finish him off or back it up or something, I want something big and heavy and it's going to penetrate a lot. And I picked up these XP3s. And that that's an all copper make. bullet. Yeah, it's pretty similar to that terminal scent, really. Yeah. 150 grain, is it? That one? Yeah, that's 150 grain. So I'm maximizing <clears throat> everything. You want more weight for yeah. more energy, mm -hmm. ideally. Uh, you're going to have a higher BC. You're not going to push it as fast. But for a big animal like an elk, you want that penetration. Yeah. You want the momentum to keep driving. And an all copper shank in it, it would open up. Uh, the pedals actually broke off of this almost mm -hmm. every time. Mm -hmm. The ones that I would recover would just be a shank. But that works pretty darn well, too. And hammer bullets are proving that these days. Yeah. They're designed for the pedals to come off. And then they radiate out and do some additional <coughs> damage. And you've got a flat face on the front of that bullet. So you get straight line penetration. And boy, it just keeps going. I've had great luck with that. That seems to be what these used to do. Yeah. So, and, and that, like you say, that was kind of a <coughs> precursor to some of the, the premium bullets of today. Yeah. Cutting edge is another that designs yep. bullets to flat, kind of mm -hmm. fragment off like that. So you mentioned you get the, the maximum sectional density. 150 grain bullet has a sectional density of 0.279 compared to 130 grain bullet has a sectional density of 0.242. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like a lot. It's not quite 40 points on that scale, but it's enough to make a difference yeah. on game like an elk, mm -hmm. especially when you go from a soft cup and core type bullet to a really tough bullet. Mm -hmm. You know, a swift A-frame, nozzler partition. There's actually 160 grain semi-pointed nozzler partition that works great in a 270 for elk. A little bit. Just doesn't have a lot of distance capability. It's right. not real aerodynamic, but for timber hunting, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, they used to have pretty pretty standard in the 270 days back in the 20th century was a 160 grain round nose bullet. Yeah. A lot of pe people mm -hmm. offered that, and that was what we would pick for elk or moose sure. or something like that, mm -hmm. because we knew we were getting the higher SD and the better penetration potential out of those bullets. Unfortunately, yeah. they were cup and core bullets, so yeah. you always sacrifice a little bit there. So. So here's your 270. You've got 130 grains, 150, maybe a 160 now and then. But what about going the other direction? Because back when I was young, I would load 90 grain hollow points. And if mm. I remember right, they were going around 3,600 feet per second or 3,500 feet per second, something crazy like that. And I would do long range shooting. We would actually use them on rodents yeah i didn't want to shoot too many but it was fun to reach out that far and probably and then, turn a coyote inside out too bingo. yeah yeah and and there were some 110 grains 115 grains are yep. still out there mm -hmm. you've got some options if you're a hand loader it makes it a lot more versatile yeah i've used 110 <clears throat> grain barnes tip triple shots you can Ooh. drive those fast 3300 yeah. plus I bet that's, that's kind of fun for deer and so forth yeah they don't have much in the way of aerodynamics. So you lose that velocity very quickly. There is another kind of dynamic that's come into play a little bit when Browning started building rifles with a fast rated twist. Yeah, there you go. It'll stabilize. They're standard 270 Winchesters, folks, but they'll stabilize those real long bullets with a one and eight twist. So Browning rifle, 270 mm -hmm. Winchester, but they put a faster twist into it. Yeah. Anybody else do that? Just guys ordering custom rifles. Custom. I've, I've heard from quite a few <laughs> listeners that do a custom rifle with a fast twist. So if you get the fast twist barrel in a 270 Winchester and it's a one and eight twist, you can stabilize 175 grain uh, Sierra bullet? Yeah, you could. Now there is one caveat to this and that's the 270 doesn't have a lot of head height. That's from the mouth of the case to the tip right. of the bullet. It's got to still fit in a magazine. So the Browning X bolts have long enough magazines to use a long sleek bullet it, you know, you don't have to seat it so far down in that there's a gap around the rim. So how far are you uh, projecting down into the powder space? Oh, it depends a little bit on your bullet. No more than Show the necessary, camera right? 
with this one, if if I was hand loading it with a generous, uh, uh -huh. so with this <laughs> with this bullet right here, if I could, I'd hand load it to uh, have the the full diameter shoulder of the boat tail ending right where the the, the neck the meets the neck shoulder meets and the, the case. Shoulder. Yeah. yeah. So, then so you're the, ending up a quarter inch long. And the Browning so. rifle magazine will handle that? The, as far as I know, yes. yes. And there are some others, like a Remington 700, they have a, an inherently Pretty long, long magazine. magazine yeah. So that. as long as your yeah. lead's long enough. Mm -hmm. And hand loaders will understand this. You yeah. just, you'll just you know your lead distance and you, you can shove that bullet back minimally and extend it enough to keep your power. What are you expecting for a velocity out of? I think the 175 is a little bit heavy. Let's go with 175 grain Ancubon bullet. Mm, 175. <coughs> Acubond, uh, they don't make one, that in 270. They make a 165 no, Acubond one, long range. What's the 170? There's a 170. There's a, this is a 170 Burger. Okay. Um, I might be wrong. There might in a 270 caliber. <coughs> I think the heaviest Acubond is a 160. Now there's a 175 grain nozzle partition. Hmm. No, there isn't. That's no. in a 7 mm. We don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what I do know is that's a 170. Okay. It's a burger. Well, that, my point is, I think 170 is about as heavy as you want to go I for agree. the powder space. Yep. And I think you probably would get about 2,750 to maybe 2,800. I was going to guess 2,750. That. Yep. If you're, if you're hot rodding it just a little bit within safe limits, you might get 28. So what you're going to sacrifice doing that is you're going to have more drop because you've got a lower velocity. Initially. But you're going to get less wind deflection, yeah. which is a big deal out west. Mm -hmm. Most of us miss game because the wind's blowing our bullet That's off right. and drop too much mm -hmm. because you can memorize your trajectory table. Gravity is consistent. It's going to always drop eight inches or 18 inches or whatever it is for that distance. You have your turret or you have your ballistic reticle or you do grandpa's holdover, but you know what the drop <laughs> is going to be. I've taken game like i said most of my 270 stuff was 300 yards or in yeah but i did one time take a 535 yard pronghorn mm -hmm. by knowing my drops you know a little, sure. over, little over three feet with the load i had at the time uh so it can be done it's got enough horsepower for little animals like that you get your bullet yeah. in there and it's going to do the job yeah and a bullet like that too just because it's so much more aerodynamic uh, this i think this has a bc approaching 650 660 something like that it's a lot more yeah. It will eventually be going faster than the lighter bullet launched but at that's higher a long speed. Way down range. Yeah, 350 yards probably. So I would say at 500 yards, they're probably neck and neck for drop. And at 600 yards, if you're shooting 540 on a pronghorn, <laughs> you're probably going to be benefited by that. But again, you have to have that fast twist barrel, and this is getting into specialized yeah. hand loading. It's not your traditional classic 270. No, I think to sell this 270 and make it viable for today's market. I think you need to convince people what it's doing with standard loads, standard mm -hmm. twist barrels, That's the rifles. Because right. I read a stat one time that of the top 10 selling deer rifles in the country last year, the 270 was somewhere in that seventh or eighth position. Mm -hmm. That means there are a lot of people still buying this yeah. baby. What mm -hmm. are they going to get with a standard good old fashioned 270 Winchester, one in 10 twist, 130 grain to 150 grain loads on the market, plenty to choose from from all the different manufacturers. What are they going to be able to do with that 270 rifle? You know, that's a super versatile cartridge, fairly low recoil, easy to shoot well, that'll do just about anything you need it to do out to about 400 yards and a bit more if you know your rifle and load. Yep. So if you were thinking, I need to buy a 6.5 PRC, I would say, you could also just get a 270 because out to 400 yards are doing just about the same thing. Right. Or if you already have a 270 or maybe grandpa's just died and left you four cases of 270 ammo, the cartridge will still get it done. Yeah. All right. Have you ever taken a moose with one? No, but my sister-in-law did. Yeah. She shot a nice Shiras moose, I think at about 270 yards with one of my 150 grain partition hand loads. Oh, she stole some of your ammo. She hmm. did. Sister-in-law. It worked. You. <laughs> now, if I remember right, Jack O'Connor took a big brown bear with the 270. Does that sound right? I remember reading that he took two interior grizzlies with it, so he may have done that as well. But that's pushing the envelope on a 270. I right? think so, It, it yeah. goes to show you what it can do. And I think what too many people overlook is the mild recoil. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks think, oh, 270, that's going to kick. Well. 
that's because they've been shooting 223s and 243s. Yeah, you got a little more recoil. Yeah. But not as much as, well, it's about the same as a 308, mm -hmm. a little less than a 30 out six. Sure. And they figured years ago that the average American male could shoot the 30 out six all day without yeah. tearing the shoulder off. I so. think it's actually a fair bit less than an all six, 15 to 25% that much? less, depending on your load. Right. Mm -hmm. There's some other great beauties of it with 130 grain bullet going 3,100 feet per second. It's, it's fast inside of that 200, 300 yard envelope. Oh yeah. I know some, uh, European hunters that prefer it for driven wild boar because really? when they're leading a wild boar between 40 and 80 meters, mm -hmm. they don't have to lead it as much. Yeah. Instead of leading it two and a half feet, they're leading it. 18 inches they and just then hold on the nose and kill it and probably recoil is so slight that they yeah. can recover for a subsequent yep. shots yep that's right cool another thing that we don't talk about enough you know you look at this as kind of an outdated case design quite a bit of taper in the body long sloping shoulder yeah the neck is real long you know that just doesn't adhere to modern cartridge case design yeah uh features which are good right but that case does one thing that these cases struggle with. It feeds like butter. They flow <laughs> yeah. out of chambers. Yeah. So slick, slick, baby. You talk about your fast, smooth follow up shots. Yeah. That's Let me tell you about advantage. this time I called in seven coyotes at once. There I'm sitting with my model Ruger 77 270, and here come these coyotes. And what do you suppose I did? You know how fast and slick the thing goes? I missed all seven. <laughs> 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 you can be fast, but first you have to be accurate. That's right. Like the old competitive shooters say, you can't miss fast enough to win. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, folks, I think that's uh, about it as far as old 270 goes. It works. It works. It works. What think do you we should stick, stick with it. It'll hang around for a few more years. I kind of think so. All right. What do you say we go shoot some steel targets with it and just see how I want to see just how fast it goes. I think I've got a camera that's slow enough that we can see the bullet traveling downrange. We'll try maybe a four or five hundred yard shot with it. See cool. if you can see that bullet. Let's do it. All right. All right, folks. Just how good is a traditional 270 Winchester loaded with some of the best ammo made for it today? This is 145 grain ELDX by Hornady and its Precision Hunter line compared to a modern rifle with a dial up turret and fancy dancy high BC bullets. We've put a bunch of water jugs with red dye in the water. At 200, 300, 400, and 500 yards. We're going to see how far out I can hit these jugs with a standard scope, doesn't dial, there's no holdover reticle, classic wood stocked Model 70. This should be fun. We're going to 200 yards first. Fire in the hole. All right, good to go for 300 yards. Okay. Knocked it over. Woo! Looks like he hit the lower edge uh, left. Okay. Let me know when you're on 400. We'll go to four. Let me find it. 400 yards. <laughs> That's, That's what we're looking, we're for. looking for. All right. We got one more out there. 500 yards. Let me find him. This one's going to be a trick, folks. Okay. About six inches low. Okay, how was my line? Perfect, right down the middle. Ah, oh, just off the left edge. Elevation was good. Oh, I'm out of ammo. We'll let her cool for a minute and try again. All right, folks, we've let the rifle cool a bit. We're gonna go to 500 yards and see if we can make contact with that milk jug, that water jug full of red dyed water and this is kind of an interesting exercise folks because these are about the vital size of a deer shooting a traditional rifle with a traditional scope just using a holdover method 
All right, Ron, how's it feeling for you? Fire in the hole. Just under it. The line was good. Like your first shot. Smart him. That'll do, folks. Here's the thing, though. I wouldn't want to shoot at a deer right now with this rifle because I couldn't get it done with the first shot. Out to 400 yards, I feel pretty comfortable with this rifle. And 400 yards is just about all that most folks should ever be shooting. Hey, folks, it's time for our tip of the week, and Joseph has one. What I would say, folks, is don't waste a perfectly good flat trajectory in a modern high power hunting cartridge like the 270 Winchester. Hear that? I just called it modern. Compared to some, it still is. Zero your rifles at 200 yards because then with a 130 grain bullet going 3,100 feet per second, your point of impact will only be an inch and a quarter high at 100 yards. And at 300, you're still holding on hair. And that can make the difference between success and missing below an animal by guessing when your rifle is zeroed at 100 yards. Good tip. So the decision is yours, folks. If you want to stay purist and classic, the 270 Winchester is about as good as it gets. If you want to go modern, you can still shoot a 270. It's just called the 6.8 Western. Or if you're like me, you're going to do both. <laughs> As my old pal Ron here would say, folks, hunt honest and shoot straight. That's good advice. Thanks, Joseph. <laughs>